I'd like to call the November 12th, 2019 Governing Board meeting of CB Fiber to order. Are there any additions to, or changes to the agenda? Okay. Uh, hearing none, any public comment? Anything that's not on the agenda that, that you all want to talk about? Okay. Moving along, um, he got the agenda. Um, uh, I talked to the Moortown Select Board last week. Uh, so moving on to Moortown application to join the district. Um, they were um, they were a bit surprised that I was asking them to make a decision right then. I said, well, if you, if you don't move right now, I'm not going to guarantee that the rest of the board's going to say yes come December. So they were a bit taken aback and a bit nervous, and I assured them that having met with Wheatsfield, Champlain Valley Telecom, that those folks were not, um, were not too nervous about the prospects of Moortown joining. And so they actually made their joining uh, contingent on finding out whether the things that I was telling them matched the things that Waitsfield, <laughs> Champlain Valley Telecom, make sure that, made sure that those actually matched up. So um, I was hoping that their sort of pre-delegate uh, Chuck Burt, who I actually met with and spoke to the Moortown Select Board back probably about the same time I was talking to a lot of your towns, and at that time Moortown did not put it on the on the 2018 town meeting ballot. So they have since requested admission to to the district. So that would make uh, would bring us up to 18. Any any thoughts about about that? No. No, <laughs> but I'm glad that more town wants to join. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More the merrier? No. no. Not the more the merrier. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, up to a certain threshold. It'll be 20 years before we get a bill. No. The more the merrier when it makes sense. Yeah. Ooh, more town. <laughs> so do you want to, is there an application? Do you want us to vote on it? Yeah, I mean, so I, I was hoping Chuck would be here and that he would be able to immediately essentially be seated. That's why I put this this first. So if he wanders in, I will you know wave him to a seat and he can introduce himself and, and we all can introduce ourselves again. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you'd like to make a motion, that would be, that'd be cool. Do we have any, anything writing from him, an email or anything? Um, or I, I, just how he said to you that thing? I could pull up their select board meeting minutes. I suspect it reflects that. But g given that I was there, I'm, I'm reporting back that that actually did take place at their meeting. Okay. I'll, I'll move to accept uh, more time as a member of the district. Second. Okay. Seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Great, that's kind of how I thought it was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were, yeah, they were, they were a bit, a bit surprised. I was like, you really want us to make a decision right now? Select boards don't do that. <laughs> like, well, actually, I want you to make a decision back in 2017. I didn't say that. I was like, so close. But so hopefully, somebody gets to watch this video. And that's my orange select board like, was like, why are you even asking us? Yes, no. And that was all, all, all but a handful were pretty much. Straight on board, and I, and I think uh, honestly, the, really the thing that that happened um, was the number of people in the audience that said, "Well, well hold on a second, <laughs> um, no, no, wh why don't you say yes to this right now?" And uh, yeah, it was really, um, and there and there were people who were not there for this. They're like, "I'm at the end of the line," and then somebody else says, "I'm at the end of a different line." It's like, and there's and there's no, you know, there was no hope other than DSL. So. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. Um, public hearing on an adoption of the 2020 budget and annual report. Um, has anybody heard any feedback from the, um, hello, hello? Hello. So like walk in like 20 seconds later than your agenda item, but you are, <laughs> Moortown has been, has joined the board. This is uh, this is Chuck Burt from, from Moortown. Hey, Chuck. Welcome. 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 Who is actually, um, and who is actually in some ways, as I was telling them, you're, yeah, you're, sort, of, you're sort of an, <laughs> you're actually sort of an old timer because you were you were among the first people to to reach out to me when we were trying to organize other towns in in central Vermont. So, um, 
while um, Chuck's getting his things together, um, maybe we'll just do a round of introductions. We'll just go around go around the room so you can get a sense of who's here and which towns are represented. So you know me, I'm uh, Jeremy Hansen. I'm the chair from I'm from Berlin. I'm Josh Jarvis. I'm the delegate from Barrytown. <clears throat> I'm Siobhan Paracone. I'm the delegate from Orange. And I'm David Healy, the delegate from Callis. I'm the health treasurer, Berlin resident. I'm Andrew Gilbert, delegate from Cabot. Michael Burnham from Plainfield. I'm John Russell from Worcester. Rick Phillips here from North Africa. Phil Hay at Middlesex. Okay. Susan Martin Woodbury. Back. There's a couple more behind you. I'm Jeremy uh, Alternate from Plainfield. Okay. I'm Alan Gilbert. I'm the Alternate from Worcester. And Tommy Woodbury. Delegate from East Montpelier. You can grab a chair there. We're a little bit constrained for space because of the book fair, taking a, a number of the tables and quite a lot of the space. Thank so, you, everyone. Great. It's Thank good, you for joining. It's good to have you on board. It's a nice, nice round number 18. Um, okay, so adoption of 2020 budget and annual report. Uh, any feedback about the, um, the draft budget or... Um, Annual report that went out. It went out to all of the all of the clerks to be communicated to all of the select boards and city councils. Right? Are we talking about the draft budget that was sent out on 22 October? Yes. Uh, so that was uh, looking at that again. Now um, it says revenue four million or loans four million dollars, and I thought we had a discussion that we were going to put in there the amount of money that we expected that we might expend. Hmm. Don't recall that discussion. Um, the, 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 there were no <coughs> things to be sent out, right? And I had, the, to, had, had, had a deadline. The updated one I have in front of me, the one that I sent out to all the clerks. And it says four million. It does not say four million. No, I'm looking at the ones in October twenty second email. I don't have um, anything. That's the one before the twenty. Okay. Did you send one that's out to us? That's not yeah, the right no. one. Oh. I will. I will. That's the most recent one. That's the most recent one you, you have. I, I updated it with all your feedback and sent it directly to the town clerks like that that day. We don't. I don't think we have that here. Yeah, we don't. I will send that right this second. My town posted that on their website, so I was able to go to the website and get. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. But, but if you're asking if you made your specific asking for any feedback from the town or, or any public reaction that, such as that, I've heard nothing from the town. Yeah, okay. And there's also the date of the annual report if you made any changes to it. Um, I, I, I don't know if I changed the date on, on anything. Stand by. <laughs> okay. It's on its way through the. A series of tubes. Yeah. Virtual tubes. They could have called it the intertube, but they didn't. Good. It would have been too confusing for tire makers. There you should be, though. It's for me. Bikes were big back then. So. All right. So we can wait until these arrive in your mailbox and we can adopt them as, as presented, or we can I, we can also kind of park this one and come back to it later once everybody's had a chance to, to review it. Okay, so we're just going to um, sit on this for a bit. Um, David, do you, you, do you want to you review that, or are you willing to go into your business um, development committee report back? Sure. Okay. I um, committee had a good meeting last week. How many people have read the notes that I sent out? I have them here. <laughs> um, but anyway, we um, typically at our meetings we go through any activity that any of the members have been doing, and so I summarized some of that they saw. And so we, we learned that uh, a person by the name of Aaron Brasado is in charge of the fiber for public service department. Um, the, the department acknowledged the receipt of our application, and hopefully we'll hear today or tomorrow that we. We're successful, I and mean, it would be horrible to be unsuccessful, but we'll, we'll see and wait to hear. Um, fundraising. Um, I provided Shimon with a um, list of all the people who, well, actually, all the she got a copy of the survey results to have information on who is willing to make donations to CD Fiber, and she was going to follow up on that and I'll let her. Speak to whether she's made any progress with that. But. 
She received it anyway. Um, so I was happy to offload that task. <laughs> um, uh, we had a discussion about uh, right away, um, VTrans right away, and there's a bill, I guess it was part of the broadband bill that was funding for PEG that would find out ways of funding PEG with other methods other than Comcast reimbursables. And so we just had a discussion about what was going on there. Um, we also discussed uh, managing, ver I did a, I, I didn't include this in there, I did an analysis of how many poles there were in every town and estimated how much time it would take to inventory each pole and it was way more than I thought we could do. And so the discussion was, we'll take it in chunks. Very small chunks, I don't even, but those want to know how many poles there are, there are a lot. Um, I have that in the table, by town. <clears throat> you know, I didn't realize what vertical asset meant until you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it, was, it, you know, it was sort of funny, I didn't know what a vertical asset until the uh, broadband app, uh, innovation grant talks about vertical assets. <laughs> so, anyway, it's been on, it's been a topic at, at the uh, Business Development Committee for a couple of times. I actually have sort of a tangential question there because in Worcester anyway, there's multiple poles. Yeah. For so some of it's electric, and some of it is just for the phone lines. Yeah, and it'd be interesting to see. I, I don't know. Maybe Michael knows this. Did Green Mountain Power take over all of consolidated poles, or just the ones they were sharing? Neither. Um. Well, no, I'm thinking of DEC. I think they they took over the ones they're sharing. Okay, not their independent ones. No. So I, there's no data set that I have that the state's GIS system has of consolidated poles. Uh, and there's quite a few, <laughs> to say the least. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, some of them are standing right next, oh, next to, to each other. Yeah. 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 And double other. poles are all supposed to be removed, but they never get removed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't even remove the empty poles, but there are very few of those. I mean, they, usually the phone company hasn't moved their stuff. The phone power because they can't afford to. And the phone yeah. company, they don't have enough staff. They can afford it. Yeah, maybe. They have enough to do it. They do not plan to remove that. The other activity that we talked about, Greg had. Greg's been pretty busy. He uh, met with Whitesfield <coughs> Champlain. Do you want to talk about that? I didn't. I just. Uh, met with a, a, a VP there at, at an event, and he just okay. said they were very interested in bidding on being an operator. That was the extent of it. Okay. And then you had another conversation with uh, a company by the name of Vertec right. in Colchester, who are into Vertec does back office operations <coughs> for many telecommunications companies across the country. And said they've been reading about the broadband grant and uh, would look into whether there was an opportunity for them to offer to provide services to CUDs. So going, moving on to the next item that we covered was responding to RFP questions. Um, one of the first people who received the RFP sent a question right away about um, funding, and we'll get that in a minute. Um, but the committee decided that I uh, would compile all the questions, draft responses, send them back to the committee for concurrence, and then um, put them on the website and notify the people who actually requested um, that they were going to bid on the proposal, they would get an independent notice. Um, so far, I would have received two questions. <laughs> um, I still have some time. Um, the final version, uh, final version of the response was done by the 19th. So we did a calendar, basically, the meetings to make sure we're not falling behind on anything, and uh, we're working on that. Um, question of funding. So in the question of funding, and uh, the committee decided at the meeting that we'll indicate that we have about sixty thousand um, dollars. That doesn't mean that that's what we have to do. I got a re Ray today email me saying he doesn't feel like we should tell them any amount of money that just will take the best bid so but pra practically speaking if they've watched any of our meetings they they know the score and that's what i told ray i said ray the money's there but it's an interesting idea to let them fight over how much money is there. <laughs> um but i'll take any input on that well, two parts there one, one is speculative 
you don't have the great uh -huh. have we, have we, we are spending six, up to sixty already. So yeah. So and the other is that um, you no, know, you should you shouldn't be answering and giving them an, an amount. Just tell them that we're taking a, it's a competitive process. We're taking the best. Yeah, no, I like the, the appraisal. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was my position as well. But but uh, another thing that I realized in talking to some mm -hmm. bidders and engineers with experience with RFPs is that a lot of RFPs are not responded to because of the fear that there's so much more needs to be done than there's funding for. And without a sense of whether they're going to be able to do it, they may not even apply. And so I suggested to the committee that we kind of compromise, that we do throw out a number, but not the whole amount. Just we do want to reserve some of the money for other purposes, and we don't want to scare them away and say well, we're only, you know, we're only 25 grand. But but then the, the last thing was that we would make it clear in our answer that um, uh, um, it would be to their competitive advantage to both bid low, despite what we're saying, <laughs> so that others others might bid lower than, than the amount we're putting there. So. And those are the usual arguments for doing right. it and not doing it. And yeah. that is that uh, we'll discourage some people and encourage others. So and uh, that's but that's how the committee reached its decision. I mean, we move back and discussed forth. it back and forth quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've mostly been on the state side of this, where we're out putting out for bids, but I have we have a very good relationship with the contractor who works for us and has been for seven years now, um, and putting together an RFP is a lot of investment on their part. It takes a lot of time, mm -hmm. and they need to know how much they can expect to get back on that. It's only fair. It's not like we're not going to spend the money. It's not like it's this. It's like we, we've got some secret million dollars and we're only going to spend 60. We've got $60,000 and that's it, and they know that, and they know, so anybody who's going to bid a million, if we tell them we've got 60000 they're either going to ratchet down their uh, response or they're not going to bother. And so I think it's, it, I don't think there's any harm to us to tell them how much we've got. And it's on them to be grown-ups about it and figure out do we want to bid or not. Yeah, and, and if the best value came in, if the, the quality um, quality bidder came in and it was $75,000 as opposed to somebody kind of less quality and less certainty but they came in at sixty. So are we going to go with the 60000 or are we going to find the money for the seventy-five? And so we'll I don't, you, huh? We'll evaluate yeah, that's, that's yeah, right. exactly. We'll right. evaluate them. That's yeah. why you don't put yeah. a dollar figure out there. Mm -hmm. And we never said we would take the low bid, so. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And I've been, I've also bid on contracts. I, I understand all the process that goes into doing that. We spent a million dollars in in submitting some proposals that I've, I've been involved with. Get it, and also get nothing out of it. Right. Yeah. I mean, and and you know, my 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 expertise is you know coming strictly from the corporate world, and and every time that I've repeat anything on it, and, and granted, it's always been on the tech industry side of things, and so they usually know that you have fairly deep pockets depending on where you're coming from, but. They never tell you you never put a dollar figure anywhere exactly right now, ever to anybody exactly. no matter what we're searching for and exactly. they came to us and if it was a really large number and it made sense and it made sense um, and we were the ones that evaluated it and determined yep. whether or not that RP that came back to us was really made sense for what we were looking for and the dollar figure you know there was always a range you know with with within our own internal budgets that we knew about that they yep. didn't need to know about that that we could always adjust in order to make the right decision. I also go to the car dealership and say, I have this much amount of money, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is happening? <laughs> and I get what I want right. at the but price I'm willing to pay. Right. But yeah, it's, but that's a good so, right. the, so, so the, the RFP is out. Um, the committee made the decision to to respond with, with the dollar amount. So I think we can move forward and see what, what comes of it. We haven't put the answers out yet. No, what, what so if, if there's strong feeling in the room, we would consider modifying our decision. But be, but because we're not in the corporate world, because we right. are a public entity, public entity yeah. we, I mean, this is all, 
are arguably public record, and if, they, if somebody went through the went through the process of watching the, the wonderful videos that Orca produces for us or reads our meeting minutes, they can connect the dots. Yep. I think we're just. Do, do any of the municipalities publish RFPs and say what the dollar is? Um, sometimes, but you can, but you can usually um, extrapolate based on previous budgets. Sure, you could do that by looking at the budget. Yep. Stay reminded of about fifty fifty. By you know, listen to this conversation. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so, so like, so the, the the cost of printing the town report in the in the town of Berlin, for example, you can just go and pull the budget from the last year or two, and you can see how much we've spent in the past, and you know kind of what your high water mark is. Mm -hmm. So this is this is not an unusual circumstance for a municipality. It, it doesn't strike me as being that important. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Then. Okay, uh, so the rest of the, the next item, the business community, I was just dividing the timetables, responsibilities, and those who haven't a chance to read this, we're going to try to get this all done by the next, the, the meeting that we, I don't know if it's on the calendar, in everybody's calendar, but we, we have a meeting scheduled for the 17th of December, uh, which is, so we have one the week before and then one the next week. So the committee will be making its recommendations to the full board at that meeting, um, will be meeting. <laughs> We'd be pretty busy. Proposals are due the 13th. Uh, the, um, the proposals are due. Sure oh, I, have, I don't have enough. Oh, I must go right here. Uh, submission deadline December 3rd. December 3rd. Yeah. Um, so, <coughs> we'll divvied up the responsibilities for ranking criteria, point system on each one. Um, we'll get everybody on board on that, and then we'll, everybody will do their own reviews separately and then bring them together at one of our meetings, and we'll bring it to the the full, full board. Um, we, in the RFP, we said we reserve the right to have interviews. So um, if we do that, I think I want them that night. <laughs> of course. Um, if possible. So that's where we are with that. Um, survey update and needs. Um, I forgot to recognize. No, I did. Um, the you know, the response rate is still not improved since the last time we sent it out, or very little since we last brought it to the whole board. Um, but in the discussion that we had at our meeting, um, Siobhan took on the uh, task of trying to get a, a, the paper survey distributed to all towns. I haven't done that. No, I know. But anyways, it's, so we've I've sort of gotten some help with that, and um, that was was great. And. I did send you the two-page version you and did. a one-page blurb on what can go with it, and you can modify it any way you want. Do you do you think it's valuable to put out a Facebook ad? I mean, I could I would just pay like twenty or thirty dollars to boost it and just send it to all the member towns. Well, interesting enough, I forgot who suggested. Was it you, Andrew, to putting the uh, the RFP in front porch forum? That was right. Right, I did, and I I I got three people inquiring. So I think being in people's face is important, and I think maybe we've all sort of forgotten that. For the, I, I meant for the survey, to make sure we get more survey responses. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, I'm going to put it again in front. I did it twice, and I think I'm going to just once a month put it out there. And, and I'm presenting uh, in Calais. I'm doing a presentation to the select board on next, uh, in two weeks, and, and I'm presenting at the Washington Central Supervisory Union next week. So... Um, and another business, we talked about WEX Power Expansion Replacement Smart Grid Grant. Now, the, the headline in the Times Argus was a grant. The story was about a loan, so I have no idea which one it is. I think it's a grant. And We're going to meet with them on since, Thursday. Yeah, since our, meeting, um, our committee said, let's get another liaison meeting. So Greg and I have now scheduled one for next week. Great. Um, Barry stated that that article was totally off base, very inaccurate. Um, it is their normal periodic funding for construction for a period of years. There is nothing special and new being built. So we were thinking, oh, they're going to build a particular set of poles to a particular set of people, and well, maybe we should coordinate with them. 
<laughs> Forget that whole idea. But we're going to have our meeting. liaison meeting anyhow, and then we'll report on what's going on with that. Yeah, and Bill Powell, we, I think, sent Greg and Mike and myself, they're getting ready to do their every five year survey? Yeah, but not yeah. until next year. Not until next year, yeah. yeah. A survey. survey. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So they asked, I mean, they went as to look at the yeah, questions for the previous year. Must, uh, to piggyback as much yeah. as we could, so yeah. if we wanted to target anybody in particular or have any questions. Right. Yeah, that's good. And I don't know why I put this in there, but Greg indicated that the Barry substations, did I get that wrong, have tall poles? Uh, uh, GMP upgraded their substations and put in new poles between the substations. Yeah. So Thank you. It, it's available. If, just was so when I, and at the bottom of the, the notes that I took is the calendar that we have both the um, the RFP as well as the business committee's meetings and and um, I think that's all I have to report. Any, any questions? I'll take. Thorough. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying pretty thorough. So were we planning to post meeting minutes, different meeting minutes? <coughs> Are these postable? On, our, on the website, yes. I would have said no with regard to the money, for example. However, comma, since you just rolled over that one quite readily, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll look at, if we're going to post them, but uh, we, we should give some thought to: is any of this stuff confidential in, in <clears throat> now and in the future? That's all. But it, for those who know, and Jared is the alternate delegate from Callis, and he has been sort of. I mean, when I asked him to put up the RFP on the website and the I gave him the little narrative that went with it, um, he did it like within 15 minutes. So I don't, and there is a minute section, but there's not a lot of minutes in it. So, yeah, so, so what, what I would strongly recommend those of you producing minutes, if, you're, if you have a instinct that something might be sensitive, um, remember the, the minimal information that we have to have in there are what are the yeah. motions, what were the votes, and if there's anything in there that could be construed as, as being sensitive, just take it out. You can have it in your own notes. Just take it out and send, send it to Jared. But I mean, we are, we are ob obliged as a public entity to produce these things. So um, we have to be careful how we tread in terms of what's, um, what we think is sensitive and what the law thinks is sensitive. So this report pretty well documented most of the discussions, and now we've spoken about them in an open public meeting that's recorded. So it wouldn't harm to put these in the minutes, but in the future we might be a little more cautious as to what minutes we report to the board. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, all right, so that's a good segue to yeah. my concern. And I don't mean to be um, negative about this. We've been at this for a while. but. Um, and, and I reiterated this thing on the phone. But, so what you just said would, would work. It makes my concern even stronger And that we've essentially created a business development subcommittee that's essentially doing all the work of the whole committee, and it's disenfranchised. As a whole board? Yes. And that's my... But that, my, but my that was based on some motions to telling, giving us direction to do that. To not do everything, but to do the things that they are working on. Pull that motion and pull it am, I, am I mistaken? No, no, we, we delegated authority on a number of things to the Business Development Committee. I mean, when there are final decisions that need to be made on, that the whole board needs to sign off on, then they, they have to come back to us. But in terms of fact-finding and, dis, and discussion... Yeah, well, fact-finding fact is one thing. I mean, my, so I'll give you some specific examples. I don't even know when a business committee meeting about me. I don't know when you guys meet. You don't even, as a courtesy, send an email <coughs> to the rest of the board members that we're having a meeting. So that fundamentally... I think we have, but maybe we're missing a few. Just the committee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? No, yeah. Okay. So from, you know, right from that point, from a courtesy perspective, it's a little weird to me. Okay. Um, so in the second part, I don't... I, again, I would challenge any place that, you know, we've been at this for two years. We're at the most crucial part now. We're in the process where we actually have money, and we're negotiating, and we're going to assess vendors. And I have no say in that. 
question, and I apologize because I, I am the new guy in the room. Um, but my understanding, based on open meeting law, is that even a subcommittee is still subject to open meeting that's, laws, that's announcements, why, meetings, well, right. so now, minutes. So now you're taking specifically to the comment you just made. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys have to produce minutes. It is an open meeting. Mm -hmm. If now you're going to like skim the minutes, well, so that when you come here, <laughs> because yeah, whatever, I'm going to have. Like my third, you know, that's just compounding on my concerns. And again, I'm not trying to be whatever, but to me, I, I guess I just don't understand this. Like from a perspective of what we're all trying to do, to me, this is like there's no efficiency. You're going to get two or three responses. Send them to everybody. Let everybody rank, and let's vote on it together as a board. What efficiency is there in like only allowing a subgroup to do this? I think that's a question um, for the whole board. Get, getting you all an answer? Emotion. I'll answer it. Okay, you'll well, answer you can come to the meeting. I mean, the meeting. So, I didn't know how many work. answers okay. do we do? We I have no idea when you so, guys so, meet. So, so, so there's, some, there's some easy moving forward things yeah. that we can, we can clear off the plate right away. Um, when the Business Development Committee has a meeting, send them to the whole board, send them to Jared, and you need to do 48 hours before the meetings happen. Easy. Um, produce minutes. Okay, so those are that's that that will happen going forward. We, that's that must happen going forward. Yeah. Now the, the next question is a different one: is who's involved in what sorts of decisions? The ultimately the selection must be the entire board. Right. It must be the entire board. Mm -hmm. yeah. The business development committee um, was, as I understand it, pre, essentially pre-screening them. It's not like so they're they're going to come with a recommendation, not a decision. And, and, they, and we should, we all should, as a board, have as early access to that stuff as possible. That's again, I guess I would just emphasize the courtesy aspect of that, then making sure we all have a good chance to see them all and to understand that so that when it does come, it's not kind of a, a fait accompli. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, I, I'd say in line with that, we, we, I think it's we probably need the process that's calendar for the whole group is publicly available. Yeah, and again, I didn't want to be like whatever, but it just it just strikes me as uh, you know, like this is we're finally getting to some meat and fun, and then it's like, whoa, wait a minute, I don't, you know, it just feels <laughs> so a little weird. The, that, the, 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 the good news is we have a dedicated agenda item for talking about scheduling through the end of the year. Mm -hmm. That I think what we can do is we can make a list of all these meetings coming up, and we'll make sure that Jared, who has been really good yeah. about keeping the website up to date, <clears throat> we will make that the the calendar of record. Okay. We'll just have him keep that up to date, and when we have agendas and minutes, you can have date yeah, and a link for an be. agenda, a link for minutes when they come. And there's, a, I mean, I, I'm thinking the, uh, the the like Montpelier City Council and the you know the Northfield Select Board, they do really well. And, and Northfield's is simple, Montpelier's is really complicated, but it's the, it's the same sort of thing. And I think we can do that. All right. Yeah. So it's good. David, under uh, 5B1, you have that you will send out the proposals to all the BD committee meeting uh, members on December 3rd, and then you review them on December 10th, and then so forth. Could we just send the proposals to everyone? Sure. And then the BD can do their ranking work in the meeting. Right. Yeah. That's and then give the rationale for your so, recommendations. Yeah, no, I'll get, and, so. and if there are interviews that night, that would be something else. Really. It just gives the extra week to go yeah. through. So it's important that these proposals are not public documents. Yeah, they're not public documents. <coughs> so when we send them out to everybody, you have to be careful they don't go to town clerks. That, that these, <coughs> it's essentially like executive session. I, I don't have a problem with sharing them with everyone. Are we allowed to do that via email? I don't know. We can have a discussion by email. You can, you can communicate information and transmit things like documents and public and <coughs> records of the body. But we can't have a back and forth discussion outside of a warm meeting. It, it should be clear, perhaps, on the subject line it says confidential. Mm -hmm. The first thing, and then it says what it is. Yeah. Or if you're feeling at all nervous about it, if you want to distribute something to the whole to the whole group, send send it to me. I mean Or I can put it in a uh, uh, the Google Drive with a share only the members of the committee. I mean of the, the board board. Mm -hmm. Actually that yeah, that would be we we underutilize Google. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <don't laughs> yeah, as as long as it's not set to allowing edits. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I get Can you do that? Too. These are the the, the the big information you can get back is not going to be in an editable format. So I don't think that's going to no, be. No, not likely. likely. But 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 if the but if I'm going to put it in the zip drive, I'm going to zip them all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just, yes, uh, well, I'm very aware. Of, I'm but sure. In general, 
But if, there, if there's like a ranking or a commentary or a spreadsheet or something like that, that's not something that, that we can do without running afoul of, of um, open meetings. And one other comment. If anyone in this room thinks that we're getting to the fun stuff <laughs> and wants to participate, they're welcome to join the committee. It's yeah, not I'm going to need some help. Yeah. I don't know who I was referring to. Well, we, <laughs> we, we, we do have a, have a new board member that just want, wanted in, so he, 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 might have, uh, he might have some interest in doing some of the things. So this is maybe not a terrible time to discuss that since I actually re removed the um, appointment of people and um, assignment of tasks to committees. So, um, so we have our business development committee, which is doing you know the some pretty heavy lifting right now. So you know dealing with RFPs and processing proposals and, and that sort of thing. We have a policy committee, which is um, rather asleep at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, there's an executive committee that's sort of just created by by virtue of the you know who the officers are, and we've, I don't know that we've ever met separately. Um, finance. finance finance committee, which is also um, kind of sleepy. But both finance and policy did a lot of work in the early days. Yeah, most certainly. And so it's, these things <coughs> cycle like that. So this committee is doing a lot of work now, but then there'll be another kind of committee. All right, so, and then outreach, outreach and fundraising at subcommittee. So if any of those are of interest to you, we can certainly make it official and uh, sign you up on that. You don't have to decide right now, but. I, w I would like to learn a bit more about how things are working, but uh, I'm certainly willing to help where help is needed, so. And, and the, the, the other thing too, I mean, if we post the, you know, when the business development committee is meeting, so I think Thursday, you have another meeting, right? Um, if it's convenient, just, yeah, you're obviously free to, to come on down. Wasn't there one coming up? No, no it's next I? month. Next month. I have, a, but I, I have a meeting date on something that you had sent that said uh, to review draft answers to the RIP questions. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Email. You can't do it by email. You cannot have conversations and discussions by email. So the, okay. the, the, the way that you can the way that you can get around that is by you still have to warn the meeting and at least one person has to show up at a place so that the public, if there are members of the public, if that's, if that's your house and you're willing to have people show up at your house, that's fine. But then you need to have everybody attending uh, synchronously. No, which people? We're not talking about meetings where we're reviewing proposals. That's not oh, public. yeah. This that's not a public meeting. Everything is... So it, it will have to be warned as a public meeting, and they will have to go into executive, executive session. session. Okay. But it still has to be warned that this is something that they're doing, okay. and they have to go through the process. Executive session. The thing that we're you can't have one-on-one back, on one back, on one one back and forth. You can have one-on-one back and forth. There was some discussions last time around the confidentiality of proposals until one is selected and so forth. Mm -hmm. How would that work when they're all being discussed in a public forum? We, you yeah, go to executive, executive session. session. So, but, but the committee can't go into executive session, right? So a public the, the committee can go into executive okay. session. Mm -hmm. the committee can, so mm -hmm. They just have to go through the, go through the right steps. So, and just, to, just so that part, with the, since they are confidential, I guess just some mechanics of that, you really do want to make sure, so the, the proper way, I guess, is notice everybody and you know, both public and us, but and as long as you can just control access then to the actual documents themselves as back mm -hmm. material, that's totally correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's that's, it's not that's, it, that's fine. It, it, it's, it's, it's not unusual, you know, so at, at the select board, you know, I'll get a, a packet of information, sure. not all of which, you know, if I get a, like personnel information, right. that doesn't go to okay. Times Argus or or wherever. Yeah. Um, oh, that makes sense. Most of it does, but just right. to clarify, when the, when the subcommittee goes into executive session. That does or does not permit another member of the governing board who's present to also attend the executive session. The the, the, the the people, yeah, the people who who are um, de delegates to that committee can decide who they can bring into that meeting. So that that often you know we'll do that with a town administrator or a town attorney or a treasurer, these sorts of things. That's fairly common. So if non-committee members happen to be there and want to discuss this, wants, want to discuss these things with them, 
if the committee decides that they don't want that person to be there, then they can choose that. I mean, it's a it would be a majority vote either way. So no luck for you. Andy. Well, it's not. No, my concern isn't necessarily, you know, and, and I appreciate that. It isn't uh, even. Yeah, I wouldn't be a voting member anyways, right? right but no. my concern is that. You know, we're, we've been at this for a long time, and we represent a lot of different communities and interests, and this is probably the most important point we've been at, and I just want to make sure everybody's franchised you know, at, at, at an appropriate level. And I'm not trying to be, you know... I'm on your side. I appreciate it. <laughs> but, I, yeah, I, I think just some of the... Let's just get some of the mechanics down better, and then I'll address that. No, I appreciate that. I just want to know... I mean, the other part of this, it's a lot of work. I understand. <laughs> so I apologize for... You know, yeah, no, not no, just in franchising you. No, um, I, but, and it couldn't be. Just, you know, I could have. I would like to think about was on the other side. You know, I, if somebody else brought it up, and be like, oh wow, that's not the goal because we're all doing this yeah. kind of as a thing. I'm, I'm so, good. Thank you. So, do you want to get an updated schedule now, on the record? Let's um, let, let's talk about that when we have our okay. uh, schedule through the end of the year because we have governing board meetings also coming up. I just want to make sure everybody remembers when that is. Well. Do them all at once then, if we can. Good. Okay. Cool. Anything else on the business development committee? Could, could I talk a little bit about the survey? Is that is yeah, that most definitely? Okay. Yeah. So, um, I have found that having paper orange is a little town. There are not a lot of us on front. Whatever. Front page. Yeah. Front page. <laughs> that thing. I'm on it, but not a lot of us are. Um, I got a lot of good response when I went door to door, but oh my God, that was painful. It was. It, I spent five hours on a hot Saturday going door to door, and I didn't get a lot of responses. Um, but what I was thinking about that is, I would have gotten more responses if I had a QR code that people walking out their doors could scan with their phone and answer later. Um, if I thought to leave some of the paper yeah. surveys with people, because yep. they had, I did get one back in the mail that way. Mm. Um, getting, as you'd mentioned before, getting them at the town clerk's office, and that's the thing I want help with. Mm. Uh, I would like you all to print out paper copies. Let me finish. Let me finish. Paper copies with your name on them <laughs> and your address. <laughs> your name and your address, not mine. <laughs> What's your address again? <laughs> Put them in your town clerk's office, so they're actually there. Paper copies with the QR code on it. I will provide you with a document that has that. So they can, if they're in there, they can scan it with their phone, or they can pick it up and take it home and respond to it. And let the clerks know what you're doing and ask them to encourage people as they come in, because we're coming into um, tax season. A lot of places are paying their, their taxes. This week and next. Could we put a beer coupon on? Not next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, next week. Next week. Next week and um, and so if we could get those in to the clerk's office, and I was thinking, well, maybe I could take a day off and drive to everybody's town clerk office, and I'm like, no. Don't do that. I, I I can't I can't afford I can't afford a day off because I just took my vacation a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, so if I could get that level of help, if I could get you all to commit to this, <laughs> <your thoughts, laughs> that would be awesome. And, and so I will get you. So you have a QR code. To, I will put. I will generate a QR code, and and put it on like the that. survey. So they don't even have to pick it up. They can just scan it and go. Um, but for the people who want a piece of paper and want to fill it out and want to send it to you in the mail. Um, so can all the guys at the, uh, the American Legion use their flip phones and, and this QR code? No. Yeah. 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 No. No. They're going to need a smartphone. They're going to need a smartphone. And, and a lot of people with smartphones are not going to have a QR reader on it. They're going to need to know how to do that. So yeah. And you were going to say something. Well, no. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. And yeah. I think what you have to say is absolutely accurate. And, and I just wanted to, to just make a note that um, in, because I knew that you were doing this, and I remember you talked about the time that you had spent going around. Um, <clears throat> and the same thing uh, is, is for Barry Town. There, are, I mean, there are a lot of us on front porch forum, but there are a ton that just aren't. We're just not. We're not reaching them. There are a ton that just don't even go into the town clerk's office. Period. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there is something that our town does do. I don't know if all your towns do it or not. But we actually send out a, 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 a legit newsletter, physical newsletter. Mm -hmm. 
to everyone. It goes out to everyone in the town, <laughs> and I, I'm, I coordinate uh, with the town manager. And in this November's newsletter that's going out to our entire town, um, this survey is going to be in that. Okay. Um, so if I could get that QR code yeah. and I can get it in just in time, I might be able to have them add it to that. That would be yeah, fantastic. I can write that tomorrow. Okay. The Cabot Chronicle comes out. Deadlines in two days too, so I can do that. In that. Yeah, I'll try to get that out tomorrow morning for sure. How about the post office and the liquor store? That's mm -hmm. the that liquor store. <laughs> liquor store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so wherever it occurs to you that your neighbors hang out, <laughs> bowling alley. Library. Can you not send Library. that to all of us? Yes, I will. I will. There, so I've got a two pager, a two -pager that okay. Dave built. I will send that out to everybody. I have to add the QR code to that and get you guys a QR code, a separate sheet that could go up as a QR code so when the piece of paper run out, there's at least that. Um, and then y'all can do, you, you have to add your name, you're gonna have to go to Word and add your name and address to the thing and then print off a bunch of copies and get her out. Could we have a modest sized poster with a pocket on it with a bunch of surveys in it and a QR not code? Not by tomorrow morning. No, not by, but, and a QR code on the poster mm -hmm. saying, please take one of these or scan the code here and return it. We've actually got something, one special, of each. something special for you. We have sandwich boards. <laughs> and you can walk oh, up and yeah. down <laughs> the <front laughs> of a safe way. Every only, town clerk. Yeah. Only if only a snow machine suit. <laughs> it's right at the intersection on two there. Yeah. With the blind corner. Perfect. Perfect. I'll just <laughs> step out. <laughs> so the guy. Yeah. Next. All right. That's it. I'm done. Thanks, John. Thanks. Thanks. Anything else uh, business development committee related? Uh, are we ready to go back to the um, the public hearing on the adoption of the 2020 budget and annual report? Has everybody had a chance to take a peek at that? The, the budget looks like what we talked about. Okay. No surprises? The unit report didn't have really that many changes that had been suggested. It was just uh, yeah. it was, there's some yeah. language yeah. changes. Yeah, yeah. So um, <coughs> I'm fine with the changes. Okay, so um, I will move that we adopt the uh, 2020 budget and annual report as our official 2020 budget and annual report. I'll second that. Okay. We have it seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> jo I, I, delay. Yeah, and by, by the way, everyone, Jonathan is on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jonathan. That was a bit of late. Did he introduce himself? Hi, everybody. Oh, yeah. And so, so I, I realized I didn't ask you for an introduction when our new, um, our new board member, uh, Chuck Burt, joined. So, Jonathan, if you want to do the honors. Thank you, Jonathan. A short bio. Right? Your your <clears throat> internet connection is holding up, huh? Uh, What'd you say? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you sure? All right. All right. I'm fine. a I'm gonna wait in a dollar short because we already took the vote. But I did have a question on my select board. Um, they were asking if we were going to start paying a treasurer or a clerk. Is that built into the budget? I believe it was. Then just wasn't called out. There. I, I sold them. I think it is. It's probably under the office. Supplies. Yeah. That's that's where the sandwich was. <laughs> There's a mess somewhere. I'm not. I'm, we, we we did talk about it. <clears throat> I don't remember a line either. Hmm. Okay. So. So I guess we will cross that bridge and we're going to amend the budget. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't amend, it, amend the budget. You can change. You can, you know, the report's going to the towns. I mean, if they do have some significant comments to make on it, what are we supposed to do? That, that, that window just closed. Oh. That window's over. So we uh, we met our statutory obligations to the towns by providing it to them and with a certain amount of notice. They had a window. Um, by which they had to respond. Thanks for communicating that, Tom. Right, well, and uh, it was faster. <laughs> what's that? Sorry, it wasn't faster. That's that's We had to get to them by November fifteenth under the statute or something. But I think they had an opportunity to provide feedback or, or ask questions. That's yeah. The opportunity to to give feedback and ask questions would have happened during this meeting. Right. They would have sent. Us. 
they would have sent someone or they would have sent an email to me or to someone yeah. to um, communicate those concerns. Yeah, they sent him and we said, meh. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's feedback and we, yeah. could, we, we could go back at this point and go back and edit it and add however much you think for a clerk or a treasurer or what have you. We just don't know. Well, it didn't stop us from the rest of the stuff. We didn't know we had either. <laughs> I mean, it did great. I think you guys should sit together. You want me to go out of the way? <laughs> you mailed this already to the clerks, though, right? Every, every clerk in the district got it, and I asked them respectfully to pass it along to the select boards or city councils. And, and as I understand it, many of them did. And I saw the clerk today, and uh, she didn't say anything to me about it. So. Well, Kitty definitely got it. No, I'm sure she did. But mm -hmm. Wasn't any feedback. As as I had a request this week from my town clerk wanting whatever I'm going to put into the town report in March to get it to them by December or something. So I don't know how many other towns have that same kind of requirement. But mm -hmm. that's fine. I was just thinking too. It was just making sure that everybody should follow up with their town clerk to at least make sure it gets into the town report and stuff if you can. Yeah, and the um, so our alternate from Barry City, the, the, the mayor, he also asked the same. Of, uh, of Greg and I, once we have it finalized, we can pass it along. And uh, as I recall, um, Jonathan, we were going to work on a uh, slightly more digestible version rather than the statutorily uh, required version. You st is that still, you still willing to work on that? Yes, I, I would still love to help with that if possible. Absolutely. Okay. So um, what we can do is, uh, Jonathan and I will work together, the, our official, report is going to be this one. He and I will work together to get a maybe a shorter, uh, more concise version um, without without the uh, lingo jargon rather. And uh, we'll make both of them available. And we'll let the we'll let the, the clerks or the select boards or whomever decide what to include. If they want to include both, awesome. If not, they can just pick. So we, we do have the opportunity right now. We can amend this budget with ten thousand sure. put ten thousand dollars in revenues, ten thousand dollars in operating expense for a possible clerk or whatever, and it wouldn't be a big deal. No, this is and it, and it would more clearly define something that we probably are going to do. Mm -hmm. So we, we are on that agenda item right now. What that the heck? There would be okay. So um, where would you put the ten thousand in revenues? Just additional. Uh, I I don't know that I would put it as a revenue. I would put as a Put a, but a treasure clerk and or treasurer as an operational expense. Well, yes. But then, we get the money. Yeah. Well, well the, there's a three hundred forty-six thousand dollars positive bottom line. So yeah. dropping that by ten isn't going to make right. Yeah, no, right. Right. fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. operational expense. Just more overhead. Do we need a motion? Uh, we we will in a second. Let me just, let me just put this in here. So how, how how do you want the line item labeled? The clerk, clerk and treasurer. Um, it should be something more generic. Operation. Operational stipends. No. Admin, operational admin, something like that. Board assistance. Administration. Yeah. Board assistance. Administration. 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 Board administration. So administration. Administration. Ten thousand. Just, just round numbers. We don't. Yeah. Know. So do we? Okay. So we'll say that was. Okay, let's make sure my. My sum covers all of that, and it does now. Okay, so that brings the net income down to, uh, to 336, 640. Okay. All right, so. Um, Motion to amend the budget to, to add the. Whatever we said it was for ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars for administration yeah. under the operational expenses. Yes. Seconded. Okay. okay. Seconded by Tom. Any um, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. <coughs> Motion passes. Go back to your town. There you go. You spoke. <laughs> and tell them maybe the difference. And, <coughs> a line item difference is not bad. So does this require that this be resent to all the town clerks? They, they, I'm going to redo that anyways, okay. and so I, what I will do is I will remove the word draft from all of these, and they will be marked as final. <coughs> so the copy that um, the, the, the copy that we'll send um, soon will be 
this this budget, the annual report, and then the um, easier to read annual report. And when well, is the deadline that it needs to be in? I don't know that. It, I mean, the deadline is town by town when they're going to include in their town reports. I see. So I'm hearing from some some folks it's December first. I know in Berlin we could get it in January first, and we'd still be all right. We need December fifteenth. Okay. So do we want to set a deadline here and just that it's done? Well, I mean, it's it's really going to be on, on me and Jonathan to to finish that. But uh, uh, Jonathan, you and I can get that done by December first, right? Anything else about the budget or the annual report before we move along? Nobody else's select boards or city councils have any feedback? Just want to make sure. All right, moving along. The status of grants. Um, I'm, I submitted the quarterly, um, quarterly report for U, our USDA grant. Um, and handed off um, some documentation from David that showed his in-kind work um, as we built the survey and are sort of ramping up to get the RFP out. Uh, there's a kind of a handful of um, new kind of numerical <coughs> justifications that we have to do to say we have this much in-kind. Thankfully, we haven't gone for any um, reimbursements or anything yet, so that um, that was simpler than it's going to be in the next quarter. So that's that's good to go. Um, I got the paperwork into Think Vermont. I have one more one more piece of paper to make that final final and then we will have a grant and we will be good to go with that and can start submitting uh, reimbursements for that as well. Um, the broadband innovation grant I'm looking at the, at their web page, and I've been sort of like frantically refreshing it, hoping that <laughs> maybe by the time we got Shift to this Shift F5 refresher. Shift oh F5. yes, and they were Shift F5. I, I've I've been doing it. <laughs> they did do it. I did not not, not kidding. It said um, on their website it says the um, awardees for the first round of funding under the Broadband Innovation Grant Program have been selected and will be announced on Tuesday, November 12th, 2019, via an official press release. Wow. So it's just <laughs> <laughs> something called what? Digger. Vermont Digger. So it's on Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get it? Vermont Digger. 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 So we are good with the insurance. We are good with absolutely okay, everything. I, I, I need to do the final, like literally final documents. Okay. Um, and then that will be, and we will be good to go with that. So thank you for your work with the insurance. They are completely satisfied awesome. that we've met all of those requirements. I'm going to go see if I can find my press release link at Digger. So for the, remind me of, so think for mine, I know that I'm on. The USDA and the broad, like, what are the two? Think Vermont Innovation Grant, which came from the state. Yeah. Which came from ACCD. Yeah. USDA Rural Development. Right. And then this is um, this is the Broadband Innovation Grant from DPS. How much more is this one? Sixty thousand. So we were twelve five. Twenty five. Twenty five. Mm -hmm. and sixty. Okay. Yeah. This one kind of counts. Yeah. It's. Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's not close to get. No. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so a snow day. Are, no, they, they submitted it, but it was the, a snow day. The media guys didn't post it yet. But, yeah. but I'll just, I'll, we can just recess for a while. I'll just call Clay at home. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in Northfield, right? He does. Um, I'm just looking at press releases on Digger that were posted to, yeah. posted today. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, they don't <laughs> So, um, so I'm when it's ten twenty-seven a.m. I'm hopeful and uh, <laughs> to get your blue yeah, hopeful that, that that we'll get that. But obviously, we we don't know until we know. Um, anything else we should be talking about with grants that I'm that I'm missing? 
Do we have grants that we have not yet approved us to submit? Because we talked before that uh, before we submit a grant over ten dollars or whatever the number was, that we're they were going to get board approval. Right, but we're not looking at any others yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the the last time we did that was okay. a couple months ago with the broadband uh, innovation grant that David wrote almost the entirety of it. Actually, I think we approved it, and, and you, then you then we sent it out like two three days later, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So th thankfully, the state has a really had a really fast turnaround time on this. It was less less than a month, <laughs> actually. Shockingly fast, like but almost yeah. two weeks. Very fast. <laughs> that's, that's true. And I, and, and I think they, they probably already knew who was going to be applying. Um, so, yeah, it'll be, it'll be good. As, if, as soon as I hear, I will do a broadcast to the whole board. And I think if we can then maybe, um, there is some language for a press release that did you? I did something for the RFP that I suggested that we post. So, so I, David did. I think I think we will we can probably piggyback that on hopefully finding out about. Well, about we did this. language for the, the USDA one. Yeah, right. So yep. I did that yeah, one. Right. Yeah. So, so we can write that. I'll I'll put you on the committee. <laughs> so I'd, I'd recommend that we send one out just on the RFP on that the we RFP had done one, yeah. just to keep us you know fresh and in people's minds. I had actually people stop me and say, "Hey, uh, uh, make that faster, go faster, <laughs> would you?" Mm -hmm. But at least they know that I'm doing it. That the mm -hmm. CB fiber that we're doing mm -hmm. some stuff. Right. And well, I thought so the RFP was this. a progressive thing. I'll take it. Or I'll, do it. I'll work with you whenever and yeah. we'll try something. And I'll okay. do it we can put both together. I think that would be okay. doubly good news because it shows that there's concrete steps being taken and now we'll have the resources to actually You know, by the way, we have a survey. Yeah. yeah. Always, yeah. Always, always put that in the Include bottom. That link always. Yeah. All this yeah. stuff is, yeah. is absolutely key. Once the you know, yeah. public understands that we're actually moving forward, we really have concrete business to do, and that we're going to have a service that we're really going to be able to offer them, and people get really yeah. excited yeah. for it. Yeah. Um, no Snickers bar. No. If it is going to be frosted in bigger, if we do get it, uh, the green it's worth dropping the link to the survey in the comments on their article, even on their page. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anywhere you find it, it's always without it. I don't know. I haven't tried any of them. Drop it in there. The gold ones are caramel. Oh, that's going to be good. That's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. Okay, anything else on grants that we should be talking about? Are there grants coming up that we need to know about, start thinking about, move forward with? Is there any reason not to call your friend in Northfield? Yeah. Well, we can, we can keep pause. talking. Yeah. I, I, talk can't, I actually yourself. can't talk, and be, talk because I have Jonathan <laughs> on the phone, so that's... I'd lend you my phone, but I can't read it. Anymore. You want me to call him? If you have his number, yeah, or, or just just, just shoot him a text if he if he's around. Any news? <laughs> King of Fire replies also. So. Vermont is a suitably small I'll, place, I'll, so that's I'll not tell weird. Him I'm only asking for CV. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, Don't he, tell he, me the bad news. You, you, you've been authorized. Oh yeah, I have so As I work to get up to speed and kind of target some of the first things that I think we. Maybe need to tackle as a group on the accounting side of the house. Um, you know, I met with Becca and we're in process on the bank stuff that always takes 10 times longer than you think it's going to. Um, and she mentioned that you were the person I should talk to about getting any information we have or documentation about the capital grant. Yes. And then you for the other two for the thing for Vermont and that $25,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And like if you if you wouldn't mind sending me that along with copies of Quarterly or anything else, that way I can start familiarizing myself with that. And do you have a statement of grant award for the USDA grant? I, s I sent it to you and David and Jerry, I think. Okay. And okay. In, a, in, a big, in a zip file. Yeah. 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 So just if you just do a search for USDA, sure. that that whole thing is in there, and that has all the paperwork I signed. It actually has all of the reimbursement documentation and stuff mm -hmm. that I have to submit. Um, like the stuff I submitted today. Perfect. Yeah. I'm just going to start, I'm trying to, you know, I'll try to get it organized and collect everything. I start looking at, you know, a few other things, and then we'll eventually need to consider a charter accounts general under and really moving forward with some mm -hmm. some actual documentation of that stuff that's that's maybe in a software, it sounds like, but I know that, I know that we've got a lot of it in Excel right now. Yeah, and it would be good if we had 
QuickBooks or QuickBooks. The, the equivalent thereof so that we could easily, if we have a, a treasurer's report, which we would usually have at the beginning of every meeting, a treasurer's report where you can say, here's our balance, here's our, you know, right, you know any checks that we need to approve or anything like that, and we're good to go. And then, um, yeah, and then just knowing knowing the cycle that we can ask for reimbursements and whatever. Right. And I've actually uh, changed the, um, changed our registration in SAM for USDA. Mm -hmm. Um, to reflect that you're the treasurer now. Okay. So actually, like just today, plugged in your email address. So if you get something strange, oh, goody. <laughs> so if you I'll, get create, I'm I'll create I'll create a separate one for my personal just to, to keep it because the SAM database, right? All those email addresses are public. So it, once you're in there, they third party vendors harass you constantly to update your SAM information because they can see your expiration date. The worst part about it is the Renewal goes from the date you complete the renewal, not the date of your current <coughs> expiration. So you okay. can bump it back. So if the there's a different email address that you'd like to use, use, whatever, let Nobody's. Clay uh, says yes. Clay says yes. What? You got it. All right. Oh. 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 Did you say thank you. The other folks were. Did you say that's... you did or didn't? You didn't tell me. Yeah. 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 So, 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 I said, I said, the CD Cyber Board is wondering where the big press release is. Any welcome news you can share before we go home? His answer is CB is getting one. There he is. 60,000. <laughs> that was your application, you said it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Kudos. Yeah, yeah, that good was job. good job, David. That was that was <laughs> your work. You can shave now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said you can shave now. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, There's a funny story about that. <laughs> well, that's a that's a, a wonderful way to cap off the status of grants ahead of time. Even anything else on grants that folks want to talk about? All right. Very exciting indeed. Now you're worried. So I suppose there's going to be um, another tranche of paperwork yeah. on its way. So buckle up. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay. It's a grant uh, as opposed to a, um, well, um, a contract. So hopefully it's a little bit simpler. Mm -hmm. Well, they it's usually simple. negotiate the one step of award. Okay. Okay. Well, even even so, that better than that, that better than Clay responding to you saying no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, WEX survey feedback. So I heard from, and we talked about this a, a bit before, I just want to make sure everybody had a chance to uh, hear about it. Uh, where did I go? Just got to have to look up. So. Bill Powell says, uh, member satisfaction survey in 2020, they're putting this out. Um, <coughs> what he wanted to propose is a process with our SME, so our subject matter expert, the consultant that we're hiring, um, and or with survey instrument design, which I guess is actually going to be David, less so the consultant, where we marry the Washington Electric Co-op survey um, with some CV fiber specific questions. Um, because they have, they're, they're putting the survey out anyways. So if there's some way that we can include something that's going to be strategically or otherwise useful to us, we have that window. Um, uh, so he says, I welcome the opportunity to meet your subject matter expert as soon as possible. So you, you've already gotten that, and you've already probably communicated with him a bit anyways. So I need to make a commitment to the survey entity so we can begin to fine tune the 2020 survey instrument. Um, and there's more. Uh, more in that email too. Is there anything that we need to be asking, or do you have any follow-ups about that, David? I'm going to follow up. I already followed up a little bit. He wants to get together again, so we'll okay. do that. And, uh, I, it, it's not clear what you know the relationship what they want in their survey relative to fiber. But it, I mean, it, it, could, it, it could be a smart meter thing is something I know they want to deal with. But it could be something as simple as. Um, Satisfaction level with the current internet service provider. Yeah, that would work. And maybe no. There's so many more towns. I mean, there are 41 towns, mm -hmm. including most of Morton, which I just saw. That's true. <laughs> so, so that would be that would be valuable to know. Yeah. You know, even though they're going to get far more data than we're even going to be interested in. Yeah. Well, it's a sort. Uh, he, he was clear on it. They, it's only a, a, a 600 person survey. Oh, okay. So they, it's, it's, by, it's just a sample. Yeah. Okay. It's a pretty wild sample. I mean, it's not by town. They're not going to get 
data by town. I mean, I don't think a number that small. Yeah, there will be no statistical, it's a, statistical it's a significance. Co-op regional data. Per, not per town, but yeah, per region. Well, if, 41 if, towns so the, were only 18. The co-op. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if they could give us some sense of of a different statistical breakdown in our 18 towns, then I think that could be... Yeah, they might be able to do that, because they're doing it by meter number or whatever. Yeah. I mean, if the, I don't know if there's an issue with doing that, but if they would be able to share with us who's answering what, and we could follow up with them, I, or I, I don't know if that compromises the way they're, they're, they're doing things. But. What's that? I doubt it, but yeah. I think our survey is going to be more helpful to them than their survey is going to yeah. be to them. I, I think they're going to be asking, does the membership support their continued cooperation with us and other initiatives like that? And yeah. okay. It's not going to be that useful to us. I, and the bigger thing down the line with WEC, I think, is you know where rural broadband is going to go and how it's going to get funded from the federal side of things. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be some poten real potential there. <laughs> Okay. Anything else on the WEC survey? So, so who's so we only have one question. Is that what I understand so far? We don't or, have any. No, we, we don't, don't have any questions. Have, well, you so, suggested the one. Are they? Yeah, serious, but right? I'm going to be with him on a you know with a range of what he can include. I mean, he has our survey. So I mean, that is you know everything from how happy you are with what you've gotten so far. There's some really? good information in there. That's pretty good. Yeah. Could no, you sorry. um could you edit the survey to include more time? Or is that problematic? Oh, no, not a problem. I just added them to the map. Okay. <laughs> I could edit the town who's in CV5. I have a statewide fiber map that on ArcGIS Online, and I just it's editable for me. I just put CV5 or in one town's name. Thank you. But could, could but, we, but, but could we add another option for that question? Oh, yeah, I'll add them to the, the survey. Is, is there a deadline when we're uh, saying the survey will close? Because well, there, there is one more milestone my town has to sure. go through. I don't know if Jeremy told everyone about this, but um, we have uh, uh, Waitsfield Telecom in our town, and they serve half our town quite well, and yeah. they've been very, very good to our town. Very good. And so the whole reason I wasn't here from the beginning is that uh, our town, our select board, opted to not join up front because of that concern. Now, after a few years of efforts, we've been able to assuage that concern and, and, yeah. and get people on board with the idea, but... Um, they did want to have one more check-in with Waitsfield Telecom and reserve the right to pull us back out after joining. Okay. Uh, it was a little bit of finagling to try to get me here tonight and start okay. learning the process and all that, but um, in any case, uh, I would be reluctant to share the survey out with my town via front porch forum. Just let me, have know, engagement, let me but. know when, and I'll adjust the survey. To okay. And, and uh, I sent you a link to the survey and some sample language yep. you might put on front porch forum when you're ready to, to move forward. Then. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And and so I'll send it out as soon as I kind of get the final full endorsement from the select board. Yeah. Okay. Um, fundraising. I have a follow-up question with Dave. Oh, right. That's a, I didn't answer one of the questions again. Go ahead. No, and then that, you said something about a statewide fiber map, and my recollection is on the e, um, Eastern Vermont uh, fiber that they were using, they got access to use some of the state's dark fiber. Do we have any state dark fiber in our district? No. no. Okay, thank you very much. The survey is for the, it, it's really for the, the consultant that's going to do our feasibility plan. So having as much information in there is pretty critical. And I was going to save this for a roundtable, but while you while you brought this up, Ray, um, there has been um, introductions made between. I think, I'm trying to think who did this. It must have been must have been DPS introducing um, somebody from Velco. I don't I don't have his name in, in front of me, but Velco has a lot of um, middle mile fiber that we could <coughs> that we could possibly use as we needed to move from point A to point B. Okay. And they are interested in in making that available to us. Oh, and WEC has just agreed, I believe, with Velco or not? Not, not quite. Not quite. They want us to, to run the fiber line that doesn't currently go to Maple Corner and East Montpelier, right? Right. Yeah. <coughs> so was that Kirk Johnson? Yes. Okay. He's yeah. there. Yeah, he's and he's so there. I think that, yeah, that that introduction got sent out to several people. I think you you were on that email. No, mm -hmm. I was okay. I was maybe it was like 
Evan up in the kingdom or something, and then some other folks down in southeastern Vermont. There were several other people, as, as I recall, that were introduced. And then Carrick actually called me and followed up. I just haven't talked to him yet. Okay. Anything else on WEC survey or potpourri as this agenda item is turned into? Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Fundraising. Is there anything else that we want to talk about with fundraising? Uh, any targets? I mean, I know you're the our fundraising guru. Um, <laughs> We got the software yet? Okay. Still working. Yeah. I actually just went back to the bank account. Yeah. Yeah. When he's got the access to the bank account, then I can get the software, and then I can get the data for the people who want it that we can touch. Mm -hmm. um, but there's got to be a lot more people than that out there that we could maybe start talking to. One of the things um, that Jonathan is he still on the phone? Jonathan, are you still on the phone? Oops. I am. I'm having a little trouble hearing people who are further away from the microphone, though. Okay, so Siobhan has a question for you. Well, I, I was wondering, because you had mentioned several meetings ago about fundraising going better if people have stories to share about the thing you're fundraising about. And so I've got a story that I was planning on writing up, and I was wondering if I could get some stories from other members of the board on why fiber internet would make a, a personal improvement in your life. A story about something that really sucked, and then fiber would make it better, <laughs> or something along those lines. I have a one word story. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think definitely uh, one of the best practices for philanthropy. So if, if you have somebody in your community who would be willing to put their name on a story, and it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be long, short to the point is good, um, get it to me. Talk to somebody, see if they're willing to put their name on it and have it become a public statement and get it to me. And I will work with, hopefully maybe with some assistance from Jonathan, brief assistance, not a lot, um, to to come up with a, a way we're storing the stories so that we've got stories we can draw on, as he said, a story bank, um, so that we can do these in a sensible way so that we're not exhausting people with pleas. Um, but other than that, another thing that I had been thinking about was going to businesses in my town and saying, hey, we want to do this. Do you have any money? <laughs> A little classier than that, mm -hmm. but, I, but not much. I just wanted to briefly add um, that we should make sure that if we are gathering stories from people, that we have their express, express written permission uh, to share their stories and use them in fundraising appeals. Um, there are templates for that sort of permission granting form um, everywhere, but uh, we should definitely make sure that we have their permission to use those stories too. Yeah. Well, there really aren't there, aren't there probably some prime candidates for stories from some of the stronger survey respondents that also said, yes, you could contact me? Yeah. I think I mean, that would potentially have a good reason they'd be able to hammer out and cut the sentences for us. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my neighbor up the hill yeah. would have a lot to say. Is, is there a length of guidance on, on when we solicit stories from people to say, like, keep it under 500 words? Or I, I think we could always distill it. I mean, I, distill it and send it back to them and say, is this OK? Yeah. Will you sign off on this? Oh, you can take the whole thing that they wrote and just use the old dot, dot, dot in the quotes as long as they've signed a release. Didn't, so didn't Jonathan just say brief? Isn't that what he... Yeah. 
Yeah. People will be grief that I'm going to write paragraphs. Yeah. yeah. I think 500 words is, and I'm not going to read 500 words. I know. Well, exactly. <laughs> Jerry's I not here, but last year Jerry numbers. did a shakedown of the board members to contribute money. I did. It's about that time. <laughs> uh, so so that, that annual that annual appeal comes, comes in December for nonprofits. So I expect that we'll probably have a similar shakedown at our at our uh, December board meeting. Right. So get that get that checkbook warmed up and. This is a per diem check comes through. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Anything else on fundraising, Siobhan? Anything else that, that you need no, from no, 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 no. No, support from anybody else? Okay. What, I have a question. At what time will be we will we'll have stickers to give out and maybe shopping bags to give out and things like that to spread the word? I have um, some designs that I've put together, but they kind of fell apart when we lost Elliot. I got his name. <laughs> um, because I was bouncing colors and, and fonts and stuff off of him, but not getting the answers, and then he disappeared. Um, I haven't heard from him in a long time, so it fell by the way. He's not on the board anymore. Yeah, and he's not on the board anymore. So um, I, I'm, I was looking at Cafe Press. I'm looking at some other possible websites to work through where we come up with a design and we put it on a variety of swag, and mm -hmm. then... You can direct people to it. I don't know whether we've got a line item to purchase a batch of things that we then hand out individually 5, ourselves. Any advertising? We have five thousand dollars okay. advertising. So, but we don't have that money yet. So, but it's in process. Is I, you know, I've got a couple of things that are in process. We also have our service sponsor. Yes, with the skewer. If, if it's towards it's fundraising, it's useful. If it's not, it's probably just increasing demand before we can fulfill it. Can there be too much? Yeah, um, there can be. Yeah, yeah I agree. City Co op. Where is that? That was exactly the salary. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you could keep people going as long as you know that. As long as they know that it isn't imminent, but that it's yeah. going to happen, and that we need their support for a long period of time, not a short. But, but you're right. I mean, people do get pretty blasé after a while. Mm -hmm. So if we start telling people three to five years, how do they take it? Uh, get um, back to me in three to five years. You're going to be watching yeah. Elon Musk. That's sort of thing. <laughs> right. Hundred and twenty. Except the hundred twenty. <laughs> well, hundred and ten actually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sixty more. Anything else on fundraising? Okay. Uh, scheduling through the end of the year. So, if we, I'm going to start with um, what I see as the business development committee meetings that are were mentioned on sort of the, the spreadsheet that you had to uh, synchronize with the stuff that's going on with the RFP. I see a Thursday, November 14th. Um, the 19th. Okay, so the 14th is going to be a collation email of information sent to the board okay. members. Okay. Then so the meeting will be on the 19th. Okay. So we need to warn it by the 17th. Yes. Okay. So uh, Tuesday, November 19th, <coughs> we have Business Development Committee meeting. Yep. We have a December 2nd. Uh, let's see. To also a business development committee meeting, or is that? Uh, I, I see topics develop review criteria scoring. That's the day before the submission deadline. That's probably not a meeting. It's probably just a collation of what you gathered from your committee, right? <clears throat> yeah, I have to figure out whether that's a meeting or not a meeting. Yeah, could be a meeting. Okay, so can we just schedule it as yeah, a tentative meeting? Yep. And it's because it's going to be better if we have yep. it and yep. cancel it. And everybody knows it's happening. Yeah. Right. And I see another one for Thursday, December 12th, as, a, list, as a meeting to rank proposals and recommendations. Yes. So that's 12 12. And we had talked about having some supplementary meetings at, in this body. Uh, 
the 26th, I, I suspect. Um. It, uh, right. That's, that's, yeah. I suspect that that's not going to work. Are we going to hold off until um, December uh, 10th for our next regularly scheduled meeting? So 10th and the 17th. I have two in December and just one in November. I just have at Thanksgiving, you can give thanks for the Broadband Innovation Grant. I saw me that tonight. What are you talking about? What? Hey, <laughs> stretch it out. Two in December is good because December the 10th can be regular business and the 17th can be focused on the RFPs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense for me. Yep. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure we're being realistic here with regard to the RFP and, and the work that has to be done. So, for example, on, on the 3rd of December, we have the proposals to do. And then, then I hear the next meeting is the 12th, and then the following, and that's a Thursday, and then the following Tuesday, you expect to have a recommendation to us. It would seem like you're going to have to have a meeting after the proposals are due before the 12th, such that you can ask questions like, well, do we need any more information from these people? Are we going to have interviews? And you might send questions back to them and get answers back in response. Shaking your head, I know. But um, so the, yeah. things are going to happen between then and you're coming to us with a recommendation. The RFPs have to be self-contained. We cannot ask questions after the fact that do not also go up to all of the other people and give them an opportunity to respond Yeah, of course. Back. Okay. Um, so, so the third yeah. is the deadline. And then we, we get those, and he sends them out to everybody. Yeah. We're going to have the criteria before then, before yeah. then that we can oh, be sending out that out to everybody. Yeah, Send that out to everybody. So you'll have from the 3rd till the full board meeting on the 17th to look at the RFPs and look at the criteria. We will have from the 3rd until the 12th <coughs> to read the RFPs and do our ranking, and then on the 12th we will meet and discuss our thoughts on that and come up with a recommendation and then for the 17th that will all come yeah. to his point um, while you can't ask new questions you can ask for them to clarify right. yeah. particular yeah. sections in my experience that's quite common yeah. <coughs> I mean Depends. You get oranges to oranges, it's going to be pretty it's easy to put them together and yeah. if you get apples to oranges you're probably going to want to ask a few questions to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, so when the town of Crestburg went through its municipal RFP process, um, two, they did two, one for construction and one for a provider. Um, they reserved the right to select two finalists and then interview them and ask more questions of each. It's conceivable yes. that they'll, we'll have some very close yep. ties and we, we, we may need clarification in order to select one over another. And we may have to extend our period, but we didn't put it in the schedule yet. Yeah, so I, I think we can we can see if we if there's a clear front runner that'll make this decision easier in this conversation moot. But let's yeah, so let's let's see what we get, and then we can. Yeah. And if, if if the folks that are reviewing it early say, oh wow, this is these are all over the map, we're going to need to do some additional follow up. Then we probably need to schedule an additional meeting. Sure. No, so if that happens, we're definitely going to have to say that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay, so I'm going to go back through this list of, of meetings that I have here. Um, we've got November 19th, Business Development Committee. December 2nd, Business Development Committee. December 10th, Governing Board. December 12th, Business Development Committee. December 17th, Governing Board. Ambitious. What's that? It's ambitious. Are we having an actual mm -hmm. development committee on the second? Uh, and I got to do budget meetings yeah, from the town to of Berlin to too. <laughs> <laughs> from, from now until oh, yeah. January. So. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that we need to add to that list? Oh yeah, another meeting or two. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Meeting at Ray's house. <laughs> Bring your own beer. Beer. I know where you live. You did mention earlier that, that we're going to create a calendar and put it up. On that, that, that's what I'm what I'm hoping to, to get from this is if we can get this to um, Jared. Jared. Jared, thank you, so that we can get it up on the uh, on the website that we'll have that you know easily uh, visible, and then um, when we have agendas for these things, just as as soon as the agendas available. Um, send it over to Jared. I'm, 
I think our meeting on the 10th, I can't imagine that meeting being terribly long. It's going to be some, maybe some initial thoughts about the applications that are in here, maybe a um, update on the, um, the grant, the BIG grant, and probably some other you know, basic stuff. But I don't think there, there, there's any huge decisions to be made then. May I ask? That's a that's that, that's a good follow up question. We'll get to, I'll get to that in a second. Regarding meetings and notices, Rebecca, I used to send the agendas to Rebecca, and she would send them to the town clerk. So am I supposed to send them to the town clerk? Somebody needs to send them to town. So so when I send governing board agendas, I send them to the t I send them to the board and the town clerks. Okay. So if you want to send it, I mean, yeah. if you want to send them to me, it's easy enough for me to do that. Well, I I, I mean I can I'll, I'll create a third group email. Yeah, so, so, so the, the way I have it set up for the governing board meetings is that everybody on the two line is a board member. Everybody that's on the CC line is a town clerk, an interested party, um, members of the media. Okay, I'll, I'll add those to my Google. And that's how our friends at ORCA know when to show up. Um, question about the, the clerk. Um, I did send, send a message back to the, uh, the person on Facebook who applied there, who was from mostly Barry City. However, in talking to Susan just at the beginning of this meeting, um, she was under the impression that with her as the clerk, she was going to take over the mm -hmm. responsibilities for doing all the meeting minutes and everything, which I thought we were going to kind of spread that love around until we found somebody who was willing to, to do that. But from what you said, you're willing to... Sure, I can do this. Well. Let's see how I do with these minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only problem I'm having is that I think the tables should be closer together. People are speaking in very low voices. It's hard for me to hear. I have no hearing problems at all at my age. Thank you. And uh, But I think people really need to speak up and we need to bring the tables together. And, and you'd like us uh, to have name tags, wouldn't you? Yeah, name tags. Regarding minutes, so we getting pre are we getting minutes from our minute meetings we haven't had? Um, I, I, I send that I send that email to Becca about once every week or okay. two. That's yeah, right. So she she has several of them done. I think she's waiting until she has all of them done to, to send to me. But yeah, she wants them to send me for signatures. So what she sent because same we day. we can't approve the next minutes because I don't think anybody's read them, are they? Yeah. Do you have the minutes from the last? Yeah. Week? I just have to f just I can send them out tonight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I, I will only clean up the probably a few little things okay. before I send it. Yeah, so you so you could either you could do a reply all to tonight's meeting mm -hmm. and that, that should get to everybody mm -hmm. that needs to get to. Um, or if I mean yeah, that that, that should probably be fine. Okay. Um, anything else? No scheduling through the end of the year. Um, so approval of meeting minutes, we're gonna move on from that because we don't have any to approve. All right. Um, so we have a have a round table. So um, I don't know. Does the Moretown Select Board do this, where everybody sort of gets like a parting shot to instill their personal wisdom on the, on the group, or otherwise say something that was on their mind that maybe came up that wasn't covered earlier? So we'll um, we'll go around and we'll start off with you, Jonathan. Do you have anything you want to add? Uh, not at this time, Jeremy. Thank you. All right. Jonathan. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I am very pleased with with where we are and the progress that we're making and uh, all the hard work that David's put on on, on on the grant that we were just approved. So, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the committee. And the committee. And the committee. Whoever they are. Yeah, I think the committee did a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I've said enough. Uh, there's one other area going on that I think may have some influence on helping us with our system. Um, based on the power outages, and for those who read Dig It today, there's one story on power outages in 911. Um, there seems to be uh, hearings on what kind of infrastructure information needs to be maintained by the straight state so we know where outages are affecting 911 calls. And so, to um, this has been something that's been on my agenda since I started the state's GIS system in 1988. 
that we have a utility infrastructure database, which we do not have. And it looks like there's enough impetus now because of what's been going on with 911 to have the utilities all get together and, and try to work on that, which will hopefully save us money <coughs> doing vertical asset inventories. <laughs> Great. I'm good. Pass. Term? Uh, nothing. Thanks. I'm good. Clay apologizes for not getting the pressure. <laughs> hour. He says they'll try to get it out tomorrow. <laughs> try. <laughs> Told you it was try. a snow day. He said there were seven strong applicants, oh. and they urged me to reapply. Oh. 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 <clears throat> Sorry to hear that, Michael. Did, did, did he say who the other two were? I asked him, he didn't say. Okay. I guess we'll find out tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. <laughs> He's had a bad day. Chuck? Um, I just want to say I look forward to working with you all. Uh, it's been a long slog to get me here and get more town in, and so uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, and I will follow up with you directly because there's probably a lot of data you've accumulated around all the other towns that. Yeah. We're a little behind on, so uh, I want to figure out how to jumpstart that process and you know, can figure that out. I'm good, thanks. So, takeaway action items are one thing is the report of this grant, right? The, the, the award. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that something yeah, you yeah, you're I'll, going to work I'll on? probably ping it off the YouTube okay. um, just to get a, a draft going, and then if we get it all from that, everybody's sweet. Okay, that's great. Okay. Um, <coughs> a few extra minutes. Uh, so I was just doing some long range view thinking on the way home last time, and uh, I remember I think it was David you sent out a uh, notice about some town out in the Rockies that had just bought their whole infrastructure and just gave it away. Yeah. Um, and I started thinking about okay, so you know we're at seventy, eighty dollars, so and there was we thrown around per month that we would you know maybe theoretically charge, um, and that helps us build out the next town and so forth as we go. Once we get 2025, 2026, and we've, we've built out the bulk of our you know, infrastructure, where does that leave us when it comes to cost? Are we still looking to have $70, $80 a month and because that's what's going to be needed? Or do we start like drastically reducing down to like, you know, 10 15 bucks just to make sure storm damage is being taken care of and all that? And just, if we want to, I know we're going to have a feasibility study and we can look at all these different, you know, right now in business plan, look at all that kind of stuff, but um, we can start thinking about different ways we could look at that like hey what we need is three grand from every residence whether they put it in now or they put it in over the next five years they put it in over ten years or I mean just different ways you could look at that kind of stuff and anyways I just wanted to see well like, the survey results said a lot of people were interested in prepaying so mm -hmm. yeah. so but at, at the on the other side of it so supposing that we that we finish mm -hmm. um, I think there's going to be um, there's going to be some expensive construction yet to be done which is, I think, where EC Fiber, where they find themselves now, they're looking at, well, what do they do about Norwich? What do they do about those other towns that have mm -hmm. cable infrastructure, and how are they going to approach overbuilding it if they choose to do so? Mm -hmm. um, other things that they've talked about are just as you said, you know, we just push down, just push down the cost, the monthly cost, and so everybody's ch getting charged forty dollars a month, or you know, half of it, or whatever, mm -hmm. and just enough <laughs> to essentially keep operations and keep, you know keep the wires on the poles. They were also talking about, and just this is sort of just um, off the cuff, you know, what if you're a public entity and you have, you know, a bunch of extra revenue? And they were talking about, you know, plowing it back into the towns. So essentially writing stipend checks back to the towns. I mean, I don't, I don't know how that would work or what would, or what strings would be on that, if any. Um, <coughs> Or do we start looking at you know different sorts of infrastructure related to telecommunications? Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's some I think it's, it's a really good question, and I don't know that we'll necessarily get to that answer <clears throat> as part of our, our business plan. But I think the more that we can talk about it, the better. Yeah, it seems like it can be. if we want to go out trying to find funds or just bringing more people, if we can sell this as like you know this is where we're trying to get, but here's our long term vision, mm -hmm. and that's part of our sell package is you know we want to get to a state where we're doing this, mm -hmm. then that can make much bigger impact than, hey, we're just going to be you know, another Comcast that maybe has better service than the other one. And, I, and I, I think I'd like to keep, maybe put this on the put this on the back burner and maybe come back to this next summer or when we have maybe a, a, a lull in a meeting. I mean, 
our next meeting will probably be a bit quieter as well. Um, you're essentially bringing up the opposite of what that one guy came here and was going to go get investors. Based on, predicated on the idea that he could sell the long tail, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of it's interesting. It's an interesting. But I like the blue sky thinking. Uh, so yeah, I, I think we can probably come back to that at some point, and if uh, yeah, whenever anybody's ready to talk about it or you think it needs to go on an agenda, let's 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 dedicate some time to doing that. Well, certainly all uh, organizations have business plans and annual reports. And as working as a utility financial analyst for the Public Service Department for 30 years, I know how to come up with a cost of service. So when that that time comes, I can be sure to I'll be here to help out with that. Cool. Any other, uh, Thank you. Any other par parting comments other than that? I'll just speak up. <laughs> Advertise. All right. So I see the end of the round table and I move to be adjourned. Second. And all in favor. Aye. Aye.